First question to you on... No, the, I don't support abortion. No, not that. I, I knew that. <laughs> that wasn't the question. How many babies do we abort in the UK every year? Uh, it's in the hundreds of thousands, and a lot of them are Irish. It's 220,000 babies per year. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the I don't know well, about the actually thing. Ireland recently legalised yeah. abortion so yeah. it's probably much fewer but it used to be that a lot of Irish women would come over to get an abortion because they could yeah I'm not sure what, what those numbers were yeah. um, I like to tease people online sometimes by saying the biggest killers of females in the UK are called pregnant women yes because they kill over 100,000 females every year that's correct but they're big into equity because they also kill over 100,000 baby boys a year. So they're not pretty just... non-discriminatory in that regard. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nearly all my life, abortion in the UK has been seen as a settled issue. Yeah. Same. Um, yeah. I was brought up thinking abortion was normal, acceptable. Nobody ever really talked about it. Mm. But this last five, six years on social media, more and more people are talking about it, and I don't think it's a settled issue anymore in the UK. The Americans are <clears throat> doing their best to really drive home the point that, hang on, isn't this murdering babies? Yeah. And they are right. Because, I mean, in, in Britain, essentially what we did is just didn't think about it. Yeah. This is just out of sight, out of mind. When I was doing my MEP tour uh, in, I can't remember which city I was in, but uh, this chap was like, look, I can't square this abortion thing. What, have you got any thoughts on it? I was like, I, I can't either. Mm. You know, it, do, it doesn't seem right, does it? The first thing I want in this debate is I'd like some honesty. Mm. It's, a very, it's a complicated issue, and I'm not saying I'm pro or pro abortion or against abortion. Um, I can see both sides. I am more on the, I think it's horrendous what we're yeah. doing to, to babies, and I'll get a bit more into that. Yeah. But because we thought it was a settled issue and because it was such a controversial issue, people have gone, oh, I'm just going to leave that. Hmm. It's already happening. The laws are in place. It seems settled. I'm not going to talk about it. But that was the case with slavery, and that was the case with Brexit. Yeah. And we never know when the people have had enough and will change things because they don't believe in it anymore. So I don't think it's a closed issue anymore. Mm -hmm. And let me state for the record that I'm also a hypocrite because I know when I You've was You've had in, an abortion, have you? No, no. But <laughs> I, I know when I was in my teens or my early 20s, if one of my girlfriends would have got pregnant, yeah. I would have pushed her towards yeah. abortion um, because I'd seen that as an easy way out for me. Mm. Um, would I do it now? No, I wouldn't do it now. Mm. But I know for a fact that m my personal convenience at so many decades ago would have trumped the life of that baby. Mm. So I am a hypocrite myself. Um, and just because something's morally wrong, it doesn't mean we don't do it. Some things are... And this is how I've always described it in, in previous times is there was a necessary evil sometimes, mm. right? Some, sometimes, you know, if it's to save the mother's life or something like that, you can view it as a necessary evil, but it's an evil nonetheless. Yeah. That's the way I've always looked. And I, and I think that's a great way of describing it mm. because sometimes all you're left with is immoral choices yeah. and you've still got to make one. Um, and people, you know, we've been brought up knowing murder is wrong. It's mm. in the Ten Commandments. Mm. And people say to me, you know, the state shouldn't murder um, babies, but <laughs> it doesn't we, seem very morally complex, it doesn't, but, does it? But the state yeah. murders lots of people. Yeah, yeah. We 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 pay for an army that kills yeah. our enemies. I'm pro death penalty. We, yep, yeah, me too. But the to we have people. the police officers who kill terrorists and kill mm -hmm. violent criminals. Yep. We also have the NHS who won't fund certain treatments and medicines, which then makes someone die earlier. Mm. So the state does these things mm. and that's how complicated it can be that there's no simple black or white mm. right or wrong it, it, it's it's very different um and then you talked about you know having an abortion if it's going to save the mother's life so if a mother's mm -hmm. got four kids and this pregnancy is going wrong and it's going to kill her mm. what do we do there what do we do when a girl has been raped been raped by a father so it's incest mm. as well what do we do there those cases are the outliers I was going to say that they make up like less than 1% of the, yeah, the abortions, exactly. so don't they? Yeah, exactly. So they're the outliers. Mm. So let's not talk about, which I've not got an answer for the outliers because well, it's so complicated. I, I, actually, I think on the case of the outliers, I could say, okay, necessary evil. Yes. You know, okay, fine. You know, I don't like it, 
it's still an evil, but I can accept the moral justification for why you feel it needs to be done. Yeah. And I, I, it's, it doesn't seem that we have much of a choice in those situations. Mm. But the problem isn't the, the category of necessary evil. The problem is the category of elective abortions, which yeah. are 99% of all abortions. Yeah. That's bad. And it's the numbers. Yes. We know 220,000 girls are not being raped by their fathers every year and impregnated. Yeah. It isn't that. It's less than 1%. Yeah, we, we know there's just such an unbelievably exactly. small number. So looking at the majority of abortions, I want to look at three things. Creation of life, mm -hmm. fetus rights, and bodily integrity. Okay. Because I think they're the three points people need to understand. <clears throat> so if you look at image two, when would you say life begins? Right. So the problem with the the, the formulation of this mm -hmm. is that it's been um, kind of polluted by American discourse. Mm -hmm. Because on a technical term, the life never mm -hmm. really stops, right? So the, the ovum is alive, the, the, the sperm is alive, and they produce a life that has never not really been alive, right? It's just not been the same organism when uh, before they interact uh, so these things aren't dead when they come into contact and they as i understand it you know the, the fuse uh to form a fertile uh is it gamete yeah uh, yeah um and then this develops naturally into a new human and so at no point was this never not alive really so but the 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 traditional answer is life begins at conception because of course we don't you know so the question when does human life begin? Uh, I, I would say that you, you can't really debate that at the point of conception, it is a human and it is alive. Mm. So that is true. Is it a person? Is it, you know, does it have rights? Does it have uh, various other questions? Well, this is something else, but it's always been alive. So yeah. the moment of conception. And I, and I agree. Yeah. That's what almost every um, biological scientists will say. Yeah, it seems to be the science. Life yeah. starts at conception. The conception may not look like me and you, no. but it's a human life. It has its own unique DNA yeah. at that time. Um, people say, well, it's, it's just a clump of cells at that point, and human life really begins when we're looking at brain function, when we're looking at yeah. movement, um, and when we're looking at the heartbeat. Yeah. And if if that's where people want, if that's what people want to say, then we're looking at six weeks old. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm a father. Um, my wife has been pregnant six times. We've had three miscarriages. And uh, I've seen more than enough scans to know that really early on in the pregnancy, yeah. you get the heartbeat. But by, by like 12 weeks, it's all there. Yeah, it's all there. You know, you've still got another like twenty weeks to go or yeah. whatever. Um, you, like I've seen scans, you know, of my wife uh, being pregnant. We can just see the the baby moving around. You can see the arms and the head, and you know, see the heart beating, and there's kicking, and like, it's all there. Yeah. It's all there, and and all that's there from six weeks. And then when people say it's a clump of cells, it doesn't move. Yeah, no. Well, what happens if I was or somebody was in um, a coma, a vegetative state, didn't move? Mm. Are they still human? Because they don't move anymore. What happens if you need an iron lung to breathe or a pacemaker to mm. beat your heart? Are you still human? Mm. Because you're, you know, you're still a clump of cells, but you can't breathe for yourself. Um, <clears throat> all these questions need answering, and it comes back to who defines what a human is. Well, that's well, that that, that this is this is why they will suddenly start arguing for personhood, uh, because things are human that aren't people, as in you don't suggest that the newly conceived fetus is a, a person because you the the concept of personhood requires a, a form of social interaction mm. and it's a kind of way of um sort of uh, it's kind of cognitive bias actually that we project onto people as in uh we are able to empathize with them we are able to have discourse with them we are able to see ourselves in them and if we can't see ourselves in like the fetus has mm. just been then we say well that's not something i recognize as me and so it's a kind of projection onto the thing but from a technical perspective it's never not been a human mm. and so if it actually matters whether it's a human which i think it does uh because i think actually says the atheist there might be something sacred about being a human and if there isn't we should certainly act like there is um then 
actually everyone gets to decide and the answer always has to be well it is a human because factually objectively it is a human and therefore we can't just sit there and say well i feel like depersoning this human because actually that's evil you don't get to just deperson people and if that's the case why can't i just deperson you mm. what stops me well i can talk i don't care you know i don't like you i don't don't you know, have your opinion you know and so suddenly you understand how well the holocaust happened you know, where it's like I can just sit there arbitrarily depersoning people if I just decide on the correct set of criteria. And what's the correct set of criteria? What's what I feel is correct? Mm. Well, yeah, that's your own biases. That's your own prejudices. You know, and I'm sorry, I, I just don't think that that's a satisfactory uh, way for us to decide who gets to live or die. And that's exactly what happens because as humans, we we treat other humans better than we treat any other animal. Mm. Well, actually, and sometimes we treat them much worse. Like I've seen people treat dogs way better than they treat each other. In, yeah. in yeah, yeah, in, but, but yeah, in yeah, some so, cases, but but but, but, I, I, but, legally, but on, but on the, legally and on the whole, we treat humans better than we treat any of, any other animal. And if we can pick a group of humans hmm. and then say they're not human. We kill animals very easily. Mm. And then you mentioned the Holocaust. That's because mm. the Nazi Germany told everybody that Jews are not human. Yeah. And if you're not human, we, we can do what we want with yeah. you. And that's what we need to be really careful because who defines what a human is unless it's biology? Because yeah. some, you and me or someone else can fall into that group that somebody else has now deemed not human and this also um prevents us from having to extend human rights to robots because if it's the the sort of sentience of a person or the the emotional projection we put on something that we imbue with personhood then we have to say that all oh, aliens have got human rights robots have got human rights you know dolphins might have human rights as like, but none of these things are human they don't deserve human yeah. rights uh, we might we might want to give them uh, moral consideration for all sorts of reasons but if we're going to have a category that is human rights it can only apply to humans great segue into the next question um, heading which is are fetus rights human rights well fetus is another way of saying baby yeah and babies are human so they should have human rights. Yes. Absolutely. Did you know that a fetus has no rights in the UK? I a didn't know that, but I'm not surprised yeah, to hear it. A fetus of a baby only has rights the second it leaves the womb. Really? So once it's born, human rights kicking up to that point. Really? It has no rights in the UK. But they... but. Isn't the maximum limit for an abortion in the UK something like 20 weeks or something like that? 24 weeks, um, no 24. questions asked. Right. You can abort a baby in the UK up to the day you give birth. Really? All you need is a doctor to sign it off. And the reason for a doctor to sign it off could be as little as a cleft lip. And you can abort a nine-month... no reason to kill a baby. You can abort a nine-month old baby if you can get a doctor to sign off with a cleft lip does it happen that often no i bet but, it doesn't but, but still but people think it's 24 weeks no you can kill babies in this country yeah. up to nine months but even, if you have a doctor sign it off but even then i'm not happy with 24 weeks i mean i've, I've had to research this uh, in previous uh, segments and th we are very permissive compared to most european countries a lot of european countries it's uh, between like 13 and 18 weeks mm. And, and and I've seen, like I said, I've seen plenty of baby scans. It's all there at 13 weeks. It's all there. So it's like you are killing a baby with yep. that. You know, I mean, I I can I can accept, you know, where it's like the the, the uh, morning after pill. Fine. You know, there's you know, there's nothing that you could conceive of being like human suffering in that. Fine. And very early. Even then, I could probably go, OK, fair enough. It's very, very early. Mm. But when you get 24 weeks, that just seems monstrous to me. And then up until the point of birth, yeah. it's definitely monstrous. So when you're looking at a late-term abortion in the UK, mm. the doctor has to kill the baby in the womb first. Yeah. Because if the baby comes out, then you'll be, you'll be charged with murder yeah, if you kill yeah, the baby yeah. once it leaves the womb. Yeah. So the doctor has to go in through, um, I don't want to say, so inside the woman yeah. with a hypodermic needle, looking at the TV screen. He has to, he has to find the heart of the baby he has to inject poison into the baby's heart to kill it 
before they can pull it out. God. And if they can't pull it out, they have to go in with forceps oh, and, yeah, and you have to break off the yeah. arms that and just... legs. <clears throat> So I, I don't mean to sound so squeamish about it, but it, no, no, it, it, it really is awful. It's absolutely terrible. So, yeah. but and it, I, I just want to say, right, you, like, it, I, 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 my wife's had three miscarriages. Yeah. I've seen them all, right? And so it's definitely a baby. And the idea of killing it and pulling it apart is just horrific. It's genuinely the, horrific. There's people, doctors who have performed abortions who then have had to stop because it says they've said I can't do this. Well, it's yeah, it's going to do some can't serious do damage this. to your soul. Yeah, like, it's it's Absolutely. awful. Now, if you're if a woman's pregnant mm. and I punch her in the stomach and kill the baby, then you're a murderer. I mean, you think that is that not the case? No, it's not the case because the baby has no rights. So, well, yes, so, but, so the baby's not. But it comes under something called child destruction, right? So it's good that they call. What's inside a child? Yeah, that is. But they don't start. call it murder; they call it destruction. Like it's just a piece of property. Yeah. Right, right. But the maximum penalty for that is life in jail, which seems quite Same high. Same as being a murderer. Seems quite high considering the crime is more like criminal damage mm. than murder. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a punishment for murder without yeah. being called a murder. Yeah. And I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Oh, yeah, to get yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I'm glad. I would like to call it a murder. Yeah. Though. But th fetuses can't have human rights because if they do, mm. then it's state-sanctioned murder. That's what abortion is. So therefore, you cannot give them human rights. But for me, the second of conception, the human, therefore the human rights. What we could do is change the wording of the human rights, mm -hmm. and we called it birth person's rights. Yeah. Or we could even get rid of all children to call it adult rights. So I, I have to say, I, I really don't like this kind of limbo because they're, they're definitely towards the end of a pregnancy. Like, it's definitely a person. You know, it's you see it kicking. You see it like the my, my, my wife has told me so many times about like the, the child, the, the baby in her has moods. Right, it has moods. She can some days it will kick her relentlessly because of something she's eaten or something, mm. and it's like, right, he didn't like that. It's like, yeah, clearly, you know, you could the the baby and she because she's connected, she can feel it. Mm. You know, she can feel the 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 temperament of the baby inside her, and so it's just, yeah, no, this is awful. This yeah. is genuinely awful. So we've covered um, human rights, and we've covered when a human life comes into being. Mm. Where most sensible people fight this battle now who are pro-abortion is yeah. on my body, my choice. So they fight yep. on bodily integrity, um, autonomy. Yeah, but that won't work on me because I'm against women's rights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking, obviously. So that's where all sensible people will fight this battle now because they can't win the other two arguments. The other two arguments go into some yeah, deep, yeah. Yeah. nasty stuff that they don't want to talk about. So yeah. it's my body, my choice is a great phrase. That's, my body, my choice to murder someone. That has been severely <laughs> damaged because of COVID. I bet it has. But... Because we had many people who shouted my body, my choice for pregnancy <clears throat> were the same people shouting, get a vaccine, mm. get a vaccine, get mm. the state to vaccine mm. you. So Wear they, your mask. They, they killed that themselves. Um, but also, it's kind of ridiculous as well. It's like, you, might, you know, my body, my choice. Well, okay, I'm, I'm Mike Tyson. My body, my choice to pummel you into the dirt. No. It's my body. I can do what I want with it. I can punch you to death because I'm a giant boxer. How about that? Yeah. It's a ridiculous argument. It is. And especially for women because women have a special place inside their body called mm. the cervix. Yeah. And I might be wrong, but, but from what I read, the cervix is where the baby grows. Mm. So they have this place in them that has no benefit to the individual that was created to hold a foreign um, life yeah so they're designed for that so we need to look at in a compassionate society we have tyrants we have evil people we are all responsible to try to keep the tyrants at bay mm. and try to protect the vulnerable if we look at a pregnant woman are we trying to save that baby from a tyrannical mother who has complete power over that new life. We've got ways of doing that without killing the child. Exactly. And if a woman in that position still wants to abort that baby 
and not live up to the rights and the the safeguarding duties that she has. Is she any different from a king or an emperor who doesn't protect the people who come under them? No, not at all. And it, there's a there's a moral obligation that she has to the baby. And it's like, okay, well, I want to uh, forego this moral obligation. It's like, okay, fine. But that doesn't mean you get to murder someone. You, know? you can give it up for abortion. <laughs> yeah, Adoption, do you mean? So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give it up so you yeah. could abort it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, adoption. So, yeah. so if, yeah, you, if you say, I don't want this baby, yeah. but I'm not going to kill it, do you, do you know the waiting list in the UK? that's not too much to ask. You, 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 oh, you, I, I bet they go like that. You know, that absolutely. Newborn instant. babies yeah. in the UK um, go within seconds of, yeah. of going on the books of social services to be adopted. Yeah. Just like that, because everybody wants newborn and babies. I imagine if the baby could be asked, they'd be like, you know, please adopt me, actually. Yeah. Okay, my mum might not want me, but I'd rather not be murdered. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the arguments is we're only aborting the babies of poor vulnerable women and those babies will have a terrible life well, hey that's not true yeah. right because the people who got uh, upset about roe versus wade were middle class women yeah like it was it wasn't poor women who were like oh my body my choice no 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 no. it was the rich women who were frankly being whores and knew they were being whores and didn't want that taken away from them right that's not yeah. true from the start but secondly so what you know even if that was true so it doesn't make making murdering a baby any more just does it no absolutely it's not atrocious so this all comes down to who takes precedence, adult women or unborn babies? Unborn babies. And I think most people, I would, I hope Children most people... Children take precedence agree. over adults. End of story. Adults put their lives on the line to protect children. Yeah. You know, how many, usually men, have jumped into rough seas or rivers to save a baby? Uh, yeah. Save a child that's not even theirs. Yeah. We can bring up this year's newspaper articles and we'll find people, oh, yeah. men, who have... Who have died saving someone else's yeah. child? We'll run into burning buildings. Yeah. It's built in us to protect the tribe and protect people around us. It's the right thing to do. Absolutely, the right thing to do. Um, if we can have the the last slide, so you'll know that's from Bristol, the Colton statue. Yep. I foresee in the future. Oh, really? Riots on the streets, demonstrations where people are pulling down statues and people are screaming BLM all over abortion. And if you look closely at the signs they're holding, it won't say Black Lives Matter, it'll say Both Lives Matter. Well, let's hope that's correct. We shall see. Oh, bloody dark. I just thought I'd put that, yeah. <laughs> that, that topic out today and cheer no, no, everybody I, up. It's but, something we're not talking about, but I want... Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. I'm not saying agree with me or don't agree, because I've not even made my mind up completely. I'm saying I'm right, okay? I <laughs> want people to think about yeah, this, yeah. because until you start thinking about it, you won't realise what you're doing. Yeah. Think about it, and then you want to do it. Well, that's down to you then. And the thing is, proportionally, it's a massive number. In America, it's 700,000, roughly, abortions yeah. a year. But they've got 330 million people there. Yeah. We've got what, uh, 70 million people here, and we're 200,000. But it's free. Exactly. It's, it's, it's free. Demented. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the premium hangouts we do, this most recent one on I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. If you'd like to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on getter at lotuseaters underscore com on getter. Thank you and goodbye.